Hello everyone, Karnasa here and welcome back to Coming Home Redux. At the beginning of this episode, we are going to attempt to launch the cargo variant of the Buzzard. And it doesn't go very well because I forgot to auto-strut it. This is why we auto-strut people, to prevent floppy rocket syndrome. Yes, that was rather unfortunate, but I went to the VAB, auto-strutted every single part and then attempted to launch it again. So. Ziggy Kerman and Rags Kerman were completely safe. We were able to bring it down safely, but unfortunately we did have to do this mission again, which is a little bit of a shame. But what this is, is an extended version of the buzzard that I designed in the last episode with a cargo bay and with a slightly bigger space plane. The wings are slightly bigger and everything is bigger and better. Anyway, once again, we are going to be viewing the RPSA multi-vessel tracking view. This is a redesign, although I'm not sure if I'm happy with this. It still doesn't look the best. It's something I might work on, but also those of you who are artistic amongst my viewers, if any of you have got a better design for this, do feel free to message me on Discord because I'm really not the best at doing all of this artsy fartsy kind of stylistic stuff. I'm not a graphic designer. It's not something that I've ever really done before I started my YouTube channel. So I'm sure there are people that could do a much better job than me. So feel free to drop me a message anyway. Right, so. We are now in orbit with the Buzzard. The booster was a semi-successful landing in that we did land it, there was an explosion, but it was only the legs. The purpose of this mission is to prove that the Buzzard cargo variant is able to rendezvous with a space station, or at least something in space. So we have got the RSSI in our targets, which is the space station that I put up a few episodes ago, it has been just sat there doing nothing really for the past few episodes and we are going to be delivering a cargo and what we have isn't going to be useful at all. No, we have material kits and specialised parts on board and they require a docking, a, a construction component to actually build spacecraft in outer space. But we will be sending up something later on in this episode that will be able to do us for us, that will be able to do that for us even, and with that being done, well, we should be able to start building spacecraft in outer space. Anyway, we have met up with the RSSI, and now we are just going to be performing our last little sections of our rendezvous until we get within 200 meters or thereabouts. The reason why I like to go within 200 meters, because with stock physics, yeah, or stock-ish, physics, not Principia, basically. You need to be within 200 meters before the vessel actually registers where it is its physics range. Before that, if you time warp around, well, everything goes all over the place and it gets a little bit janky trying to actually get your rendezvous. So we are nice and close now. Although that being said, that being said, that being said, Principia changes it, I believe, because when you time warp with Principia, it doesn't do that even if you're over a kilometer away, which is kind of nice. One really nice thing about Principia. Anyway, we have released the cargo from the cargo bay. And like I said, all this is, is just material parts, specialized parts or material kit specialized parts and a load of extra monopropellant because who doesn't love more monopropellant on a space station? That's right, we were running out. So I needed to deliver some more. Anyway, I am using docking port alignment indicator, which is something I don't really use. And I feel like I'm getting the hang of this mod and it is going to prove very, very useful later on when we start docking bigger, more grander things to the space station. And talking of, with that docked, we are going to return to the buzzard and Ziggy Kerman the third and Rags Kerman are going to attempt to dock to a free docking port, which might be more difficult than I anticipated considering this space plane is about the size of the space station. Maybe not quite the size, but it is very close in terms of size. So this was quite difficult. Once again, I am going to get docking port alignment indicator up, but as we can see on the right now, it seems to be a little bit buggy. Yeah, I don't, I don't know what was causing that. It's not really playing nice. If anyone knows more about this mod could enlighten me, that would be absolutely fabulous. 
but we are going to be using the docking port on top of the buzzard. We have more than enough RCS on here and control to be able to dock us rather successfully to the space station, like so. There we go. The buzzard has docked. So we're not going to stay an awful long time because, to be honest, the space station isn't really functional at the moment. I mean, the crew can stay there and there's life support and all of that on there, but we want to be able to build spacecraft. So Ziggy Kerman and Rags Kerman are going to get back into the buzzard and we are going to return home. And ideally, I would quite like to get a runway landing. So I'm using trajectories, trying to figure out where I should go. Unfortunately, my inclination is a little bit off to land at the runway. So I thought when we get through the atmosphere, well, this is a plane, isn't it? We could potentially try and fly it to the runway if we get close enough. How wrong was I to think that we could do that? Anyway, we are now coming through the atmosphere now and we are starting to really feel those re-entry effects. You can see the front of the space plane is getting rather red, but luckily nothing too terrible goes on during the re-entry process. One thing I have downloaded, a new mod that I've downloaded as well for this, is re-entry effects renewed or re-entry particle effects renewed. I can't remember the exact name of the mod, but if you look up re-entry on CCAN, you will be able to find it. And it adds the really nice re-entry effects. So, as I was mentioning earlier, I thought, well, we can fly to the space center. So I decided to start rolling in the direction of the space center. And that put us into this rather nasty spin. Yes, we were able to recover though, but me being a bit of an idiot thought, well, let's try again after that rather failed attempt the first time. And we went into another uncontrolled spin. Yes, I did not learn from my mistakes the first time, but after having done it twice, I thought, well, that's really not going to be working, is it? Let's stop doing that and let's try and control the space plane for the remainder of its journey down. We do fire up the engines because I do have a little bit of fuel left and I thought, well, the Space Center is actually really close. We're not that far away at all. Maybe we can glide the last little bit. There we go, we could see it on the screen momentarily there. Unfortunately, this thing is too heavy to glide for too long and yeah, we do come down at about 60 meters per second, maybe even slower. Yeah, it flies really well in the atmosphere once we get through, but unfortunately we weren't able to get all the way to the space center. So I thought about wheeling it over, but that would have taken a really long time. As you can see, yeah, we're really close. That's, that's a bit of a shame. But anyway, with that being done, we are going to be launching the second mission of this episode, which is going to be the parts that we attach to the RSSI in order to construct spacecraft in outer space. It's going to be glorious, it's going to be fabulous, we're going to be building all kinds of cool stuff with this. Although, I don't think I'm going to be building interplanetary vessels from that space station. I think what the next episode is going to be, and I think I'm going to do a live stream about this over the weekend. I'm going to put up a new orbital construction dock, one that is purpose built for interplanetary vessels. It's going to be much larger, it's going to have all kinds of structural components to it. It should hopefully look rather cool. And I think I'm going to do a live stream this weekend in order to put that all together. Not the actual building of it, but just the, the design of it. And if you want to see that, yeah, I think I'll do that on Saturday, which theoretically should be tomorrow. I want this video to come out on a Friday. Anyway, once again, we got the RPSA multi-screen and I somehow balked up my editing and we unfortunately cut off the end of it. But the booster did land in the water and nothing broke. We touched the water at about two meters per second and because of that, everything went according to plan, which is always really nice because that never seems to happen when I do these booster landings. I do need to replace the landing legs on those. I think that is something that is critically important because they are really weak. Those Falcon 9 landing legs, they just have a tendency to break all the time. Anyway, we have rendezvoused with the space station and it is just a simple case of getting over there yet again, killing all of our relative velocity, burning towards it, killing all of our relative velocity and then just docking. Rather simple stuff. Anyway, you may have noticed as well, and I should have said this at the beginning of the episode, this is going to be a shorter episode yet again, coming in at only about 15 and a half minutes long. Yes, I think going forward, the episodes that I'm going to do, they will be about that long. 
As I've said in the last episode, I'm back at uni. I don't really have much time to do all of this. And I thought, well, if I make these episodes a little bit shorter, only focus on really two or three missions at a time, then it will mean that I can get content out rather than there being a bit of a drought of content as there has been, obviously. There was a week in between the last episode and the episode before that. I would like to get maybe two of these episodes out a week. So if you don't like the shorter format of these episodes, I do apologize, but because I am so busy with university at the moment, this has to be the way that I go forward. Anyway, we do manage to get a new cargo variant of the buzzard up into orbit and because we landed at a massive two meters per second on that booster with those landing legs, well, yes, it decided to break. I think that may have been though because we were moving horizontally at two meters per second. So the entire thing flipped over, unfortunately, but we were able to get to space anyway. Yeah, the boosters, I think they do need a little bit of a redesign, which I will be going in and doing. Maybe for the next episode, maybe that is something that I will spend a little bit of time doing. Anyway, what is this mission? This is yet another cargo buzzard. This time we have a full crew, a solid crew of engineers and Ziggy Kerman yet again to pilot the space plane to get to the station. So I don't actually remember the names of the engineers off the top of my head, but they are five new applicants. We can see we've got Taco Bell Kerman and Seltz Kerman in there. Taco Bell Kerman has been sponsored by Taco Bell, apparently. That's why he had to be in this series. Yeah, I can't remember the rest of them because I can't see them, but we are going to dock them to the space station. Now that we have that construction module on the space station, well, sending up a crew of engineers does mean that we are going to be able to build spacecraft, which is something that we are going to be doing momentarily as soon as this docks. There we go. We have docked the spacecraft to the space station and it looks ridiculous because it is so much bigger. But we are going to move all the Kerbals across. Taco Bell Kerman, we have Seltz Kerman, Koi Halfen Kerman, Monkey Kerman, and I didn't catch the last one on Ship Manifest. I do apologize. I, you might be able to pause the video and see who it was. Anyway, with those all transferred across, it is time to build a spacecraft in space and we're going to go for something really simple to begin with and what we're going to do is we are going to come to the vehicle assembly building and this is just going to be an armstrong hopper we are going to go to armstrong and we are going to attempt to basically visit all of the remaining biomes because there is some science from there that i have not yet get not yet get not yet got yes i can speak anyway we are back at the space station and we are going to build it. However, I was having a problem with this and the game was crashing because of Principia. Principia does not work with extra planetary launch pads. The only way I can get it to work is to come into the cheat menu as I hit finalize build and hit hack gravity because hack gravity actually disables Principia momentarily. And yeah, that, that was the only way I could get this to work. It was a little bit of a shame, but at least I got a workaround. If I didn't have that, then the game would crash every time I tried to finalize the build. And honestly, I was super scared because the whole point of this series is doing stuff like this, building spacecraft in space, colonization, building craft off world. If I wasn't able to do that with the addition of Principia, which is something that I have added for the Redux version of this series, well, that would have been very, very sad indeed. It would have meant that I would have had to have removed Principia, which is something I really didn't want to do. Anyway, we have performed our burn over to Armstrong. We are going to make a quick correction burn on our way because Armstrong is quite inclined compared to Rhodes Orbit and we left a pretty poor time. But we have made it over and we are just going to be gaining loads of science from this mission. So we're going to leave it in high orbit for a bit. Then we're gonna get it down to low orbit. We're gonna farm all of the biomes. There's only four biomes on Armstrong. And then what we're gonna do is we are going to attempt to land at every single one of them. Because the gravity scanner on board this craft, I've not used that around Armstrong yet. Not even landed, no, no point of Armstrong. We have done any of our gravity readings. So we are going to land at every single biome. First landing is a success. We then take off, we hop over to the gentle slopes, I think. We landed in the gorges first, then we're gonna land in the gradual slopes and break one of our solar panels, which is a bit unfortunate. Yes, but luckily we've got three ever. Redundancy is always a nice thing. Then we're gonna go to the steep slopes, 
And finally, for the end of this episode, we are going to land on the Highlands. And that will basically be it. Yeah, like I said, these episodes are going to be quite a bit shorter because I, I just don't have the time. Honestly, I don't have the time. And these KSP videos do take a long time to put together. But thank you for watching this video. I hope you have enjoyed it. Next time, as I did mention earlier on, we are going to be doing a bit of orbital dockyard construction around road, which is something that I'm really looking forward to. There should be a live stream this weekend, as long as I don't fall sick or anything like that. So make sure you go and check that out. But anyway, until then, I have been Karnasa. And I will see you later.